Mother, are Post 40% Bran Flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Instant Sanka, the delicious coffee that lets you sleep, and Post 40% Bran Flakes. Mother, next time you're choosing a cereal, remember, new Post 40% Bran Flakes give your family all the important keep-regular benefits of Bran in a cereal with a delicious new magic oven flavor. Insist on Post Bran Flakes, the cereal preferred and eaten by far more people than any other Bran Flakes. This weekend, get Post 40% Bran Flakes in the new family size 15-ounce package. They're good, and so good for you. The path of the adolescent boy is strewn with all sorts of frustrations and phobias, and Bud Anderson is no exception. One such hurdle in Bud's life was brought to light recently when Betty came home with the startling news that Bud was considered a snob at school. Like this. Bud, a snob? That I can't believe. That's what Margie's sister Virginia said, and she ought to know. She's in Bud's class. Well, I can think of a lot of things you might accuse Bud of being, but snob is definitely not one of them. She must have meant somebody else. Surely not Bud. No, it's Bud. Virginia says he walks down the hall with his nose in the air, won't speak to anyone. I can't believe that. No, it's probably nothing. Chances are he saw a Gary Cooper movie lately, and now he thinks he's the strong, silent type. I remember after he saw Marlon Brando, we couldn't understand a word he said for two weeks. <laughs> oh, that must be him now. I'll talk to him about it. No, Betty, you keep out of this. Mommy! Oh, it's just Kathy. Yes, Angel? Mommy, what's a snob? Snob? Why do you ask that? Patty Davis heard some girls say that was what Bud is. Oh, dear. What's a snob, Daddy? Oh, it's uh, just somebody who thinks he's a little better than everyone else. How did Bud find out he was better than everybody else? <laughs> he's not. He just thinks he is. Now, wait a minute. Let's not judge him until he has a chance to defend himself. I can't imagine where he picked up such ideas. Surely we have... Oh, there he is now. Talk to him, dear. All right, but let's not make a big issue out of this. Kathy, don't you even mention it. I won't. Hey, where is everybody? In the den, bud. At least the little snob is speaking to us. <laughs> Shh. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, Dad. Hello, son. What's everybody doing in here? Oh, I don't know. Just happened to be in here, that's all. What have you been doing? Oh, nothing. Joe and I were... What's everybody looking at me so funny for? How'd you find out you were better than anybody else? <laughs> huh? Kathy. I didn't say he was a snob. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Where'd you hear that? What are you so stuck up about, bud? Now, wait. Hold on a minute. Let's not jump to a lot of conclusions. Is, is there anything wrong at school, bud? Oh, I don't know. Sort of. Margie's sister says you don't speak to anybody in the hall. That's not true. She says you never speak to her. Well, sure, but there's a reason. A reason? She's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, naturally she's a girl. What's that got to do with it? Bud, you shouldn't feel so antagonistic towards girls. I don't. I like them fine. I just can't talk to them. I can talk to fellas, all right, but girls... I don't know. What's so different about girls? I can talk to girls all right. Pipe down, shrimp. <laughs> but you ought to get over this because people are getting the wrong idea about you. Yeah, I know what they're saying. Gee whiz, Mom, I want to talk to girls, but I just plain can't. You can if you No, just... I can't. The minute I'm around some girls, I can't think of anything. And the longer I stand there, the worse it gets. Pretty soon my collar starts getting tight, my face gets hot, and I wish an earthquake would hit so I'd have an excuse to leave. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard of. No, it isn't silly. I understand what he's talking about. Every boy goes through this. Not Claude Mesner. 
He can walk up to any girls anywhere and start talking to them just as easy. You can, too. What sort of things does he talk about? Well, now, there's the funny thing. I've listened to him, and as near as I can tell, he's not saying anything. <laughs> but, boy, he sure says it easy. Well, look, but... But he gets a lot of laughs, too. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, sonny boy. I'll give you some lessons in conversation. I don't want any lessons. Well, you'll never get over this if you don't try. I try. I keep trying to think up a bunch of nothing to say like Claude does. But even nothing comes out nothing. <laughs> it's worse than when I try to think up something. You're just a crazy mixed up kid. Play <laughs> off me, will ya? Well, wait a minute, bud. Don't run away. I'm not running away. I'm just going to see what's in the icebox. I'm hungry. Jim, maybe you'd better go out there and have a talk with him. Well, I'll go out there, but only to see if there's any of that blueberry pie left. There's nothing to talk about, Margaret. This is just something that happens, and it passes. I went through it. What did you do to get over it, Father? Oh, I don't know. Probably nothing. It's just a phase you go through, and that's all there is to it. Mommy, can I go through a phase sometime? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you will. Mother, what are we going to do about Bud? Well, I guess your father is right. Probably the best thing to do is nothing. But, Mother, this is a reflection on me, having a snob for a brother. He's not a snob. Well, as soon as they find out he's a dope instead, that'll be even worse. <laughs> and he's not a dope. You heard your father say he went through the same thing when he was a boy. I'll get it! I'll get it. Hello? Oh, yes, Margie. Oh, I think we're supposed to study pages 107 to 120. Oh, say, Margie, we found out that Bud's not a snob after all. He's just afraid to talk to girls. Yeah. <laughs> say, why don't you put Virginia on and I'll get Bud to talk to her? Betty, I wouldn't do that. Yes, tell her to draw him out with a lot of questions. I'll call Bud right now. Bud! You're wanted on the phone, Bud! Betty, I don't think you should do this. I'm just trying to help him. I know, but... Maybe it'll be easier for him to talk over the phone. And once he sees how easy it is, maybe he'll get over this silly idea. Bud! I'm coming. Keep your snood on. Who is it, Joe? Uh, I don't think so. Hello? Pa? Huh? What's the matter with Bud? He's turning red. <laughs> Um, um, uh, Well, uh, say something, uh, stupid. It, it, it's a girl. <laughs> so what? What's she saying? She asked me how I am. Well, answer her. I can't think of an answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake, don't just stand there. Say something. Uh... Goodbye. <laughs> oh, no. Why did you hang up? Bud, come back here. No. I tried to tell you not to do this, Betty. But, Mother, this is utterly ridiculous, but utterly. Uh-oh, there's the basement door. The gopher has gone down into his hole. Margaret, what happened to Bud? He just shot down into the basement like a scared rabbit. I guess it's my fault, Father. I tried to get him to talk to Margie's sister on the phone. Mm-hmm. Couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? I'm sorry, Father. I was only trying to help him. Well, forcing him is the worst thing you could do. I said I'm sorry, Father. I remember when I was going through this stage, some helpful person got the bright idea of putting me on a committee for a school Halloween party with a couple of girls. Oh, I was embarrassed. Finally, one of the girls asked me to get some decorations out of the cloakroom. I went in there, but I didn't have nerve enough to come out again. I hid in there for two hours. Oh, I wish I could have been there. I tell you, it was no laughing matter. I finally sneaked out by wearing one of the Halloween masks they had for the party. Oh, you must have been a sight. I remember a funny thing about that mask. On the way home, I met a couple of other girls, and I found out I could speak right up with a mask on. A fairly flip guy. But the minute I take it off... Bang, right back into the old pumpkin again. <laughs> Say, maybe that'd work for Bud. 
I mean, wearing a mask. I've got some masks in my room. I'll go get them. I don't see how that will help any. He can't go through life wearing a comic mask. On him, it'd be an improvement. <laughs> well, it might help him get over this hurdle. Now that you've pushed this into a big problem, he's going to need some help. Just getting him out of the basement is going to be a big job in itself. I don't think you'll get much cooperation from him. He's going to be pretty suspicious of anything you suggest. We won't suggest it. We'll just do it. I got the mask. Good. On to the basement door, ma'am. Which mask shall we give him? This pirate one or this dunce one? He doesn't need a dunce mask. He's already got that. Bud! Oh, Bud! No! What do you mean, no? I didn't ask you anything. Whatever it is you want me to do, no! I don't want you to do anything. Kathy just found some masks, and I want to show you how funny she looks. We're having a lot of fun. I'll bet. Come on up, Bud. What girls have you got up there? <laughs> we haven't any girls up here on us. Come on, Bud. Okay, I'm coming. Hurry up, Kathy. Put on a mask. Which one? It doesn't matter. Just get it on and act funny. Okay, where's all this hilarious stuff? Look at Kathy. Isn't she funny? <laughs> yeah. Ha, ha. I'm a dunce. Howdy, howdy, howdy do. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Gee, Tara, ain't she a riot? Want to try one on, bud? No, I do not want to try one on. Oh, come on. You'd look funny in this one. Looks sort of like Mortimer Snurd. Come on, bud. Hey, cut it out, Betty. I don't want this on. <laughs> oh, Jamie, you look silly. Come on over to the mirror and see yourself. I don't want to see my... Hey, quit pushing me. See there? Don't you sort of look like Mortimer? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Father, come here and see Mortimer. <laughs> oh, 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 hi there, kiddies. Hi, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you, Betty, anybody home? Hey, who's that? That's a girl. Oh, relax, Mort. It's just Janie Liggett. Hi, Janie. Come on in. You ready to go to the library, Betty? Oh, gee, I forgot. Yeah, I'll get my coat and we'll go. I don't have a car tonight. We'll have to walk. Why don't you take a bus, sister? They've got a lot of them. They'll never miss it. Ha, 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 ha. Well, who's this cornball? Oh, I'm just a little prairie flower. I better pick me while I'm blooming. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, Jamie, isn't but a riot tonight? Are you kidding? Ixnay, don't discourage him. Come on, Janie, I'm ready. Let's go. What's going on here, Betty? What's the scoop? Don't take any wooden pickles. <laughs> well, Bud, you're pretty hot tonight. Oh, we were listening to you, and you were speaking right up to the girls there. Hey, that's right, isn't it? Well, what do you know? It's not so difficult, is it? You know, it's a funny thing, Dad. When I have this mask on, I, I feel like a different guy. It, it seems real easy to talk. Well, that just shows it's all just in your mind. Bud, let me try on your mask once. See if I feel different. Sure. Catch. Once a fellow realizes this is just a mental thing... I'll get it. Hello? Uh... <laughs> hey, it's Virginia calling back. Wants to know why I hung up. Well, explain to her. You've got this thing whipped now. Uh, uh <laughs> Well, say something, bud. Uh, 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 Hurry up, bud. Kathy, give me that mask, quick. Oh, bud, not on the phone. She can't give see. Give me the mask. Sure, here. Look, bud, if you... Hello, Virginia. Hiya, kid. <laughs> kid? Yeah, this is me. Huh? Oh, no, we were just cut off before, I think. What are you doing anyway, kid? Yeah? I sound like who? Lord Mesner? Oh, that's square. What's he got that I wouldn't have even if I could get it wholesale? <laughs> I just can't believe this is bad. It's not. Hey, kiddo, how's this for a cool idea? There's a real nervous movie playing at the stand Saturday night. How about a date? Okay, it's a deal. Well, take it easy. I'll see you. Bye. Oh, boy, Ted. This mask works wonders. It certainly does. I've got a date with her for the movies. I'll bet even Blabbermouth Claude couldn't do that. You're sure going to look funny, though, bud. 
<laughs> what do you mean, funny? Going to the movie with that mask on. Huh? I'm not going to wear the mask. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's the only way you can talk to her. <laughs> Holy cow. Dad, she's right. What am I going to do? Holy cow! This is Jerry Marshall. Mind if I ask what kind of a sleeper you are? Are you one of the lucky ones, asleep almost the minute your head touches the pillow? Or do you often have nights when you just turn and toss for hours before you fall asleep? It used to be that way with me. One cup of ordinary coffee at dinner, and I could kiss my night's sleep goodbye for sure. Took me a while to find out the answer, but I finally did. Instant Sanka coffee. You see, it isn't coffee itself. It's the caffeine in coffee that spoils sleep for so many people. Well, Instant Sanka has had 97% of the caffeine taken out. It doesn't matter how many cups you drink or how late at night it is. Instant Sanka can't interfere with sleep. Another thing I like about Instant Sanka, it's all pure coffee. Rich, full-bodied. Why not pick up a jar of Instant Sanka at the grocer's tomorrow? The large economy-sized jar. Try it. You will sleep better at night. And you will feel better the next day. a fine situation, the Lothario and Bud only comes out under the protection and influence of a comic mask. And a mask is hardly the accepted attire for a movie date. So Bud is desperately trying to solve this dilemma and keeps coming up with what he feels is the one workable solution. Like this. Well, I know what to do. I'm just not going. You've got to go, Bud. You told her you'd take her. I can't do it. Not without the mask. Well, you can't wear that silly thing out in public. It would embarrass Virginia to death. Well, what if I just put it in my pocket, and then we could sit up in the balcony where it's pretty dark, and I could put it on during the movie? <laughs> oh, fine. And when the lights come on for intermission, you'd scare her out of ten years of her life. <laughs> yeah, that would be quite a surprise, wouldn't it? <laughs> and besides, you don't have to talk much during the movie. It's before and after when you have to carry on a conversation. Oh, why don't you call her and tell her I'm sick or something? I can't do a thing like that. Yes, you can. Put the mask on and call her. It's a lot easier that way. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Now, look, Bud, you certainly can think of enough conversation to get you from Virginia's house to the movie theater. You want to bet? <laughs> Look, most of the time you'll just be answering her. When you get there, she'll say, well, hello, bud. Now, you can surely think up what to say to that, can't you? Uh, uh, where's my mask? <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake, all you have to say is hello. You can say that without a mask, can't you? I guess so. All right. Then she'll tell you to come in, and you say, thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let me write that down. <laughs> I can tell this is going to be a sparkling conversation. Oh, hi, Dad. You've been listening? Mm -hmm. Don't bother us now, Father. Now then, Bud, after you get inside, you should say something about how nice she looks, how becoming the color of her dress is, or something. What color is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bud, you're hopeless. Yeah. Betty, why don't you leave him alone? You've been needling him ever since he made the date last night. Well, I give up. He can just go on having everyone think he's a snob for all I care. I don't want them to think that. Well, don't worry, bud. We'll work this thing out some way. I was hoping there'd be a full eclipse of the moon Saturday so it'd be real dark. <laughs> well, I don't think you can bank on that. No, I looked it up. We don't get a full eclipse till April 1954, and I doubt if I can put the date off that long. <laughs> No, the thing to do is face the situation. If only I was going to a masquerade party, then my whole problem would... Hey, how about that, Dad? How about what? How about giving me a masquerade party Saturday night? 
I could invite Joe and Claude. Oh, and... hold on a minute. This is your mother's province. That'd mean a lot of work for her. Oh, gee, Dad, I, I, I do all the work, or some of it anyway, honest. But? Uh, there's Mom now, Dad. Ask her. No, Bud. I think you'd better be the one to ask her. Bud? Oh, there you are. Bud, do you have a clean white shirt for Saturday night? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Dad's got something to ask you, Mom. Well, now wait, Bud. I... See you later, Dad. You um, have something to ask me, Jim? Well, uh, not exactly, Margaret. But you see, well, this problem of Bud's, the girls and the mask and all... What time does he want the party to start? <laughs> huh? Isn't that what you wanted to ask me? About a masquerade party? How did you know? I've been waiting for it. Why someone didn't think about it sooner, I'll never know. But I'll have to admit, I'm not in favor of it. Well, now, Margaret, we've got to remember that a thing like this doesn't seem very important, but to a boy, it looms as a real big emotional problem. I agree. But I don't think we're helping him solve it by encouraging him to hide behind a mask. But, Margaret, it, it's sort of like learning to ride a bicycle. At first, you need somebody to steady the bike for you. Then suddenly, when you realize you're making it by yourself... The party is out, Jim. <laughs> Betty, will you go down and finish putting up the decorations? <laughs> the masqueraders will be arriving any minute and I still have to dress I thought Bud was going to do all the work for his party Oh, he's been pretty busy trying to slick down his hair <laughs> Oh, Jim, are you dressed? Betty might need some help downstairs Okay, I'll go right down. The living room really looks festive. You've done a good job. I hope it's not wasted effort. I still don't think this is going to do Bud any good. Oh, I think it will. I keep having a feeling something is going to go wrong. And then Bud will retreat into himself farther than ever. Now, what could possibly go wrong? Holy cow! It's gone! Hey, Dad! Mom! What's the matter, Bud? My mask! It's gone! Kathy, what'd you do with my mask? I never did anything with Come it! Come on, now! Where is it? It was right there on my bed! Hey, Betty! Well, now, calm down, Bud. We'll find it. Did you look on the floor? Under the bed? In your closet? It was right on top of the bed. Somebody took it. Betty! Now, don't go accusing everyone. Are you sure you put it on the bed? Bud, you better hurry. Some of your guests have arrived. Holy cow! Oh, you go downstairs and greet them, Bud. We'll hunt for the mask. But I can't go down, not without the mask. Bud, you've got to. No, if... Dad. They're downstairs waiting for you, Dopey. They'll just have to wait. I can't go down there. I just can't do it. Wait a minute. I've got it. I've got a solution. Betty, get me an eyebrow pencil and some rouge. What for? Just get it and hurry. Margaret, you and Kathy go and finish dressing. What are you going to do, Dad? You'll see. Hurry up, Margaret, Kathy, or you'll be late for the party. Uh, yes, Jim. Come on, Kathy. Dad. Will these do, Father? Ah, that's fine, Betty. Now, you run down and entertain the guests for a few minutes. Bud will be right down. He will? I will. Now, don't stand there, Betty. Get going. Yes, Father. Now then, Bud, now hold your head steady. What are you going to do, Dad? Make you look just like that mask. It'll never work. Yes, it will. Now, steady, Bud. Hold it there. Now, we'll give you some nice high cheekbones. Now, good red ones like the mask. It won't work, Dad. Now, we'll give you some big, bushy eyebrows. And a few wrinkles around here. A couple of lines to accent your nose. Now, let's have a look at you now. Dad. <laughs> By George, it's amazing how much you look like that mask now. I do? Yeah, let me get your hair down over your forehead. Yeah, that's better. Now smile and show those two big front teeth of yours. Like this? <laughs> that's it. I'll swear I couldn't tell you from the mask if I didn't know better. Uh, uh let me go look in the bathroom mirror. No, you better what... not take the time. They're waiting for you down there. Well, just let me take one little... Hurry up, Mort. Get down there and liven things up. Okay, but don't shove me. Knock him dead. Well, what happened, Jim? What did you do? I just made him up to look like the mask. You did? And it worked? Well, you saw him run downstairs, didn't you? Yes, but I'm surprised he'd agree to anything like that. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised you could do it. Your artwork was never anything to shout about. Well, this is a masterpiece, believe me. Let's go downstairs so I can show you my handiwork. Oh, all right, I guess I'm ready. I just threw myself together. Well, you're a pretty good thrower. You never look better. <laughs> I'll bet. But thanks. 
Margaret, when you were little, did you ever learn to ride a bicycle? Yes, certainly. Why do you ask that? Do you remember how you had your mother or father walk along beside you and hold it up? Yes. Yeah. But if you're still trying to draw an analogy between... And then one day when you thought they were holding you up, you turned your head and discovered they'd let go. And that was the day you hollered out, Look, Ma, no hands! <laughs> Jim, exactly what are you trying to say? Hey, listen, it sounds like the party's a success. Come on, let's peek and see how Mortimer's doing. <laughs> well, look who's getting all the big laughs in there. Oh, for goodness sake, he's certainly taking over. I've never seen him like... Wait, Jim, his face. Yes? There's nothing on it. You didn't put any makeup on him. That's right, I didn't put a thing on him. Jim, you tricked him. What's he going to say when he finds this out? Just what I was telling you he'd say. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> the Andersons will be back in just a moment. Chances are, Mother, you know that Bran is good for the family because it provides important keep-regular benefits. Perhaps you've even tried it, but found it somewhat lacking in taste appeal. Well, try new Post 40% Bran Flakes now. Post Bran Flakes now have a delicious magic oven flavor and a crisper texture that makes for wonderful eating every time. Yes, with Post Bran Flakes, you can give your family the vital keep regular benefits of Bran in a cereal that really tastes mighty good. When you shop this weekend, remember... For goodness sake, eat Post Bran Flakes. So good and so good for you. Post Bran Flakes are bought and enjoyed by far more people than any other Bran Flakes. Tomorrow, take home the new 15-ounce family size package of Post Bran Flakes. They're good. And so good for you. Well, the masquerade party is a matter of pleasant history by now, and its gay host, Bon Vivant Bud Anderson, is fast asleep. The weary dishwashers, Jim and Margaret, are getting ready to retire. Like this. Oh, boy, I'll be glad to hit that sack. I'm tired. Well... I must say, the party idea certainly turned out a lot better than I ever figured. <laughs> Bud had a few doubtful moments when he discovered he had no makeup on. Yeah. But he got his second win then and never faltered. Yep. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Oh. It seemed like a calamity when he lost his mask. But it turned out to be a stroke of fortune. Yeah. Jim, how many times do I have to tell you not to hang your coat on the back of a chair? Oh, yeah. Here, take it. Wait, something dropped out of the pocket. Oh, I'll get it, I'll get it. Why, Jim Anderson. <laughs> it's Bud's mask. Well, now, how do you suppose that got in my pocket? I wonder. Just when did you get this big, fat idea? <clears throat> Margaret, did you ever learn to ride a bicycle? <laughs> week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, the cereal preferred and eaten by far more people than any other Brand Flakes, and Instant Sanka, the delicious coffee that lets you sleep. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Helen Strom, and Mary Lee Robb. Calcium helps grown-ups to a more vigorous life. And now there's calcium in hot wheat meal. Calcium helps your body run smoothly. And now there is calcium in hot wheat meal. Calcium helps you to enjoy a more active life. And now there's calcium in hot wheat meal. Yes, a one-ounce serving contains one-third of your daily calcium needs, and wheat meal is a whole wheat cereal, smooth and creamy rich. Cooks instantly without lumping, just follow new directions. Get new post-wheat meal with more calcium than any other cereal, hot or cold. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking.
Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs>